Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sending greetings from UNICEF New York. My name is Anne Detjen, and I will be presenting together with Sheila Manji. In this presentation, we want to talk more about strategic actions two and three of the nurturing care framework, focus on families and communities, and strengthen services. The objectives of implementing these actions are to strengthen ways to work with families and communities to improve their environment and behaviors in ways that support nurturing care, to improve services for young children and their families, recognizing that health and nutrition services delivered through primary health care play a pivotal role, and ensure the system allows for all caregivers and young children to receive basic universal support while identifying and enabling access for those that require additional support. As a reminder, the Nurturing Care Framework proposes three tiers of support. Universal support, accessible for everyone as integral part of comprehensive primary health care. Targeted support for those families and children that are at risk of suboptimal development caused by factors such as conflict, poverty, chronic conditions, for example, HIV. And then indicated support for those with additional needs, with specialized and needs-based services. Health and nutrition services are essential components of nurturing care and also offer a basis to build on. But first, it is important to identify whether these existing services require strengthening to improve coverage, quality and utilization. Then there are components of nurturing care, especially responsive caregiving, early learning and safety and security that are often not addressed in existing routine services, but that can be added in a sensible manner. This requires additional capacities and considerations for health program and facility managers, as well as service providers. Opportunities to strengthen nurturing care exist in services throughout the life course for pregnant women and young children in the context of sick child care, such as, for example, neonatal intensive care, well child, as well as chronic care, but also in group settings, waiting rooms, as well as in the context of home visits. When strengthening existing or adding new interventions, it is important to consider for each entry point which interventions are most appropriate, how much time they might take, and how best they can be embedded in the routine context, what capacities and tools are needed for implementation. Remember, nurturing care comprises of five components. But it's these last two components, opportunities for early learning and responsive caregiving, that are sometimes not as well understood. So let's spend a few minutes here going into these in a bit more detail. In the component opportunities for early learning, we often stress the word early because sometimes when we hear the word learning, we tend to think about formal spaces for learning like schools or preschools. But in reality, learning begins at birth, which means learning begins in the home. These caregivers are all providing opportunities for early learning. They are smiling and making eye contact with their children. They are talking and singing. They are reading and telling stories, modeling, imitating, copying their children's expressions. And they are playing simple games like wave bye-bye or peekaboo. Early learning then it includes providing children with opportunities to use their bodies, so their arms, their legs, to interact with objects and people, to explore their surroundings like the home or community spaces, to activate their senses, their sight, their hearing, and providing opportunities to hear and use language. Lots and lots of language. The more language children hear before they start talking, the more language they will be able to produce when they begin talking. We don't need anything special. Everyday routines such as feeding, and household objects are all we need. Now let's look at responsive caregiving. Responsive caregiving includes observing and responding to children's movements, sounds, gestures, and verbal requests. It has three aspects. The first is the caregiver's ability to read or notice the child's cues. Can the caregiver notice when the baby is crying or when the baby is looking in a particular direction? or the infant is holding out their hand. The second aspect is the caregiver's ability to interpret what the child needs or wants. So if the cue is a cry, 
what does that cry mean? Or if the cue is the child is reaching out their arm or their hand, what does that mean? And then the last aspect is the caregiver's ability to use that information and in a manner that allows them to respond appropriately, consistently, affectionately, and predictably. And this part is particularly crucial because children are communicating their needs all the time and they're learning what happens when I communicate my needs. How do people respond to that? Is this a world where when I communicate my needs, people will listen, people will pay attention, and people will help me? Or is this a world where when I communicate my needs, nobody listens and I'm on my own? We say that responsive caregiving is the foundational component of nurturing care. It is the most important of the five components. And we say this because responsive caregivers are more likely to recognize and respond to sounds of illness. They're more likely to responsively feed their child. That is, they'll know if the child is hungry or if the child is full. They're better able to protect their children against injury and the negative effects of adversity. They'll see if there is something dangerous in front of their child and they will either move the child to a different area or remove the dangerous object, thereby preventing illness, preventing injury. Because of the nature of responsive caregiving, it also creates trust, which then in turn makes it easier for children to form social relationships in the future with their family members and others. And because of the bonding, it allows children to feel more secure in themselves, in who they are. They feel more safe in the world, and that allows them to take more risks, but also prepares them to be better able to learn both at home and when they go to formal learning in the future. And all of this sets them up to succeed in the long term. The Care for Child Development Package developed by the World Health Organization and UNICEF was developed to address these two components of nurturing care, opportunities for early learning and responsive caregiving. It includes a set of activities called play and communicate, which use everyday objects and are to be used by frontline workers in their interactions with caregivers. By using these activities, either by demonstrating, modeling, or allowing caregivers to practice these activities in the presence of a frontline worker, we are able to build the skills of caregivers to explore different ways of supporting their children's learning and also to develop those skills of responsive caregiving. There are a number of existing training packages that specifically aim to build capacity of providers to support responsive caregiving and early learning. Sheila just mentioned Care for Child Development. You can find many of them on the NCF website or in your resource list. We briefly want to make you aware of one upcoming resource, a practice guide for nurturing care. This guide responds to many requests for more concrete examples on how to incorporate the components of responsive caregiving, early learning, safety and security, but also support for caregivers in existing health and nutrition platforms. It is aimed at program planners, managers and service providers, and we hope to launch it in quarter three of this year. One part of the guide provides guidance for managers on how to organize spaces, for example, in health facilities, build capacities of service, service providers, and facilitate linkages with other sectors and providers. Another part provides examples for service delivery points across the life course. This example here on this slide focuses on antenatal care visits. For each of those touch points, it suggests ways on how providers can observe caregiver-child ch interactions, ask questions, discuss and share relevant information to support caregivers to provide nurturing care. As you can see in this context, the focus is to introduce the caregiver to responsiveness and make them aware of the child's earliest signals to convey that learning starts before birth. It provides guidance on how to prepare the home for the new family member and provide space for caregivers to express their concerns. Interventions for other service touch points also included in the guide, for example, a sick child visit in the context of IMCI differ and focus on providing responsive care to a sick and recovering child, including comforting them, feeding them, while well child visits are the opportunity to discuss and monitor development, focus on learning, safety and security. 
key for strengthening services is to invest in and capacitate the workforce, including specialists, through policies, standards, pre- and in-service training, and ongoing mentorship and supervision. The rewards are multiple for children and their families, but also for providers, as interpersonal skills and responsiveness create a new and improved atmosphere of engagement. Systems need to be prepared and adapted to incorporate these changes. It is important to ensure nurturing care is an integral part of the package of services provided, covered by health insurance, and that providers are given the time and space to deliver interventions appropriately and have the tools needed to refer those children and families in need of targeted or indicated support to a place easily accessible to them. Let's turn our attention now to Strategic Action 3, working with families and communities. The first area is community engagement. We want to listen to families and involve them in the decision-making processes. Second, community accountability. We want to encourage communities to demand good quality care. We want to give them a voice. And finally, we want to use the media to communicate a set of consistent messages. We recommend starting with the question, what makes a village, town, or district a healthy and happy place to raise a young child? This question moves us away from thinking and working as individual sectors, establishing isolated programs. Instead, this question encourages us to identify and build on existing strengths within communities, listen to and address the needs of families, and unite efforts across sectors and stakeholders. This new way of thinking is referred to as a place-based approach. It is based on the idea that resilience is built on social and community connectedness, and that neighborhoods and communities are important in shaping families and children. When working with communities, a number of constraints are commonly identified. These include the fact that communities are passive rather than active, that we don't value their strengths, and we don't involve their strengths in the design of our programs, that the community leaders are not empowered, and that very often the most vulnerable children are not reached. There's poor linkages between community interventions across health and other services, and a lack of mobilization of local resources. But there are some steps that have been shown to be effective. Working closely with local authorities from the beginning, equipping them to lead, taking a strength-based approach, involving community, all members of the community, including the men, mapping what is already working well, what already exists in a community, and using that as a starting point to build and add, Having a common vision, common goals, and a common plan that everybody can align with and work towards together. This may require building some local capacities, and it may require rethinking how services are currently being offered so that we indeed reach the most vulnerable family. We must make sure that data is collected regularly and that we report on progress so that communities can see the progress that they are making, can make the adaptations needed to overcome any barriers, and can celebrate their achievements. Here are some good practices to consider as you get going. Assess, invest in, and build on assets in the communities. Invest in the local leadership. Identify and use local values and best practices already present among families. Be sure to mitigate harmful beliefs and practices. Engage community members right from the beginning in the design and as well as in the testing of any interventions. Use a mix of approaches. This might be home visits, group sessions, community theater, and mass media. The combination of approaches will ensure that you reach everybody, including the most vulnerable. And finally, foster collaboration between all community level actors interacting with families. There are often community health workers, community leaders, home visitors, uh, group counselors, many different individuals interfacing with the families. Look for ways for them to work together to build synergy. Here are some examples of signs of progress against these two strategic actions. There is attention to nurturing care and caregiver well-being across routine services, beginning in pregnancy. There are services available for every child, including vulnerable children and families and children with additional needs. There have been updates made to pre- and in-service training curricula addressing missing components of nurturing care and caregiver well-being. 
There are master trainers and facilitators at multiple levels, national, subnational, within facilities, within communities, and within training institutions who can train and support the frontline workers. And there are policies that can protect and support the workforce. At the community level, the community members are actively involved in planning, implementation, and monitoring, and there are multimedia communication and campaigns underway. With this overview of Strategic Actions 2 and 3, we thank you very much for your time and encourage you to look at the websites listed here for more information. Thank you.